Good morning and welcome to yet another session of this NPTEL course in Infection in English. Today's lecture is an overview of the writings of Ruskin Bond. At the outset of this lecture, I draw your attention to a comment made by one of the leading critics, Heyman, in 2003. He remarks, it has taken the better half of 50 years for Ruskin Bond, one of India's most prolific writers in English for adults and children, to receive the critical attention that he deserves. I want you to bear in mind from the beginning of this lecture that there is very little scholarly attention which has been given uh, for Ruskin Bond or his works. We do have a lot of biographical information about him, but the scholarly attention, the critical framework for looking at his works have been relatively less and sometimes even absent. It is in this context that we try to survey his works. We do not have uh, too many secondary material for reference. I have relied mostly on certain book reviews and a number of interviews that uh, Ruskin Bond has given during his lifetime. One does not know what exactly is the reason for this limited critical attention on his works, but it needs to be pointed out that in spite of that he is one of the best loved writers in English in India and this is uh, something, this is a uh, more or less like a fact which remains undisputed and a number of if you randomly uh, google or try to find certain information about Ruskin Bond, you would find that he has been seen as an enduring writer, as a prolific writer who continued to produce for more than five decades. Ruskin Bond was born in uh, 1934, he is of British descent. He has been described in these various ways. He is described as a child of the British Raj, as a prominent Indian writer who lives in the Himalayan town of Missouri. That is something which has always accompanied all descriptions about Ruskin Bond. Like uh, the other Anglo-Indian writer, Alan Seeley, he also chooses to uh, live on the hills. And uh, we do not find Bond, like Alan Seeley, inviting fame inviting recognition. We find them staying away from this limelight which currently Indian English fiction is enjoying. Ruskin Bond can be described as a novelist, a short story writer, a poet and an essayist. And the remarkable feature of his writing is that he writes for children, for young adults and adults. His fiction, his writing, it has been considered as enduring by people of all cultures and all ages. He has received the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992, the Padma Shri in 1999 and Padma Bhushan in 2014. His literary output has been prolific. His writings comprise of six novels, over 200 short stories. There are uh, four volumes of autobiography, 400 newspaper articles, five collections of essays, four poetry collections and he started publishing in 1951 at the age of 17. This corpus this body of writing is so huge that perhaps extensive nature of this itself is a daunting task for any researcher who would like to work on Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond was influenced by life in the hill stations. We find him writing about his life in uh, Missouri in most of his works. His Anglo-Indian experiences have also shaped the way he write, the way he think and the way he approach uh, literature. He also has this uh, rare achievement of having witnessed the various changing aspects of India. He has witnessed the colonial, he has witnessed the post-colonial phase, post-independent decades of India. He considers himself as a visual writer. He says that he first picturizes the story in his mind before he starts writing it. So we do find that graphic nature, that uh, near to life uh, description in most of his writings. One of the most popular fictional characters that Ruskin Bond invented was that of Rusty. Rusty is a 16 year old Anglo Indian boy who is orphaned at a young age and he lives in the European part of Dehradun. Bond has often said that this is based on the way his own childhood experiences were shaped. Bond did not have a happy childhood, he often talks and writes about it and we find a certain kind of a replication of his own experiences and his own uh, thought process as an adolescent in Rusty's fictional persona. And Bond's deep attachment to Dehradun is also visible in the way Rusty uh, behaves and in the way Rusty situates himself in uh, Dehradun. The Room on the Roof was Bond's first book. It was written when he was uh, just 17 years old 
and it is a semi autobiographical novel with uh, Rusty as the protagonist. Even in one of the recent interviews that Ruskin Bond gave, he did remark that the room on the roof remains as one of, one of his favorite novels, one of his favorite writings ever. Since Bond also wrote this novel as a teenager, we do find a lot of real life graphic descriptions in this work. There is a category of stories by Ruskin Bond which has now come to be known as Rusty Stories. These are the titles. The Room on the Roof, Vagrants in the Valley, Rusty the Boy from the Hills, Rusty Runs Away, Rusty and the Magic Mountain, Rusty Goes to London, Rusty Comes Home, The Adventures of Rusty. We also find a close relation between Rusty's life and his narration and Bond's own experiences. In the contemporary when identity remains a highly contested notion, Bond has been quite clear about his idea of being an Indian. In his own words, race did not make me one, religion did not make me one, but history did. And in the long run, it's history that counts. This is extremely significant. He is of British descent. He can be classified as an Anglo-Indian, but it's not that identity that he holds on to. He considered himself as an Indian and that identity being shaped primarily by the historical incidents and the history that he has participated in. And even while he was away, while recounting his thoughts on being away from this nation, Bond again clarifies that he always wanted to come back to India because my roots were particularly in this area, Dehradun, where I had grown up. Here Ruskin Bond and his views on Indian identity can be seen as being starkly different from the ones that we have observed as part of this course. About his writing experience, Bond has clarified in multiple occasions that his favorite task is that of writing short stories. I like writing short stories because it catches the intensity of the moment and gets the essence of it. And just like Bond words it, in most of his stories, it's difficult not to pay attention to the intensity of the moment which is captured very well in the climax of uh, the stories. And some of those stories will have an unexpected twist but the intensity nevertheless remains the same and some of them will be in a very matter of fact tone of narration but it will be very intense, so intense that you would feel as if you are really reliving that moment with the author. There are some very interesting stories that Bond wrote. He himself has spoken about these stories in some of the interviews that he gave. One of his favorites is uh, The Man Who Was Kipling. It is about an imaginary meeting with Kipling's uh, ghost. And in this uh, story, Bond himself has said that he tries to give a sympathetic view of Kipling's works. There is a certain shared history that Kipling and Bond has. Rudyard Kipling, as we know, is a British man who lived and wrote in India. He also wrote about India. And uh, Bond's relation with India is also slightly ambivalent in that sense. He's of British descent, but he has also lived and wrote about India. And when Bond is writing about Kipling, it does have a different import altogether. And Bond's view on Kipling and his works and Bond's dialogues with uh, Kipling, they also tell us about a certain shared historical past which can be looked at, which can be reviewed from a different perspective now. The Boy Who Broke the Bang is also uh, considered as a humorous story and again one of those stories about which Bond has often spoken about. The Ice Have It is a story about a young man who tries to find out what a girl in a train carriage looks like and there is an unexpected ending to this story. The girl also turns to be blind and it's a very captivating story. Bond himself has uh, said about the story that initially it was devised in a different way and in the process of writing he decided to give it a different ending and it has really worked well too. And it is said that even uh, blind uh, people who have listened to this story, they found it so heart-wrenching, they found it so uh, real to life that many have asked Bond about his uncanny ability to think and write like a blind man when he was not blind himself. And Bond being not the boastful kind at all, he just says always that he imagines the story in his mind and he just tries to write it in the way he picturized it. So as he himself said that he is a visual writer, 
we find a lot of examples we can find a lot of examples from his own works which stand testimony to this visual nature of this his narration our face in the night is categorized as a scary story and bond says that he wrote it because somebody asked him to write a scary story it is based on a folk tale which he heard in lucknow and he says that on being asked to write this scary story he tried to loosely reinvent the tale which he was already familiar with the garlands of his brow deals with certain profound themes it's about hassan who is featured as a victim of destiny and age main theme of the story is to highlight the irony of fate when heroes go out of popularity and this is also a story about which bond has spoken much about he also tells us that heroes be it uh, literary personalities or sports persons there's a certain limelight and fame that they enjoy when they are in their most most productive self but as time goes on as a uh, fate and old age catches up with them the popularity also wins away it's about a story which tries to talk about this weaning popularity and how these things are very fleeting and quite meaningless and we also see bond's own views getting reflected in terms of his attitude to fame to popularity on being labeled as celebrities or heroes a case for inspector lal is a story which brings a human side of a police officer it puts the idea of justice being above the law and we do find a human touch in most of bond stories there's also an underlying ethics an underlying belief system a value system that he believes in he is uh, not skeptical about articulating certain systems of values and systems of faith that he believes in that he has faith on most of his characters come across as being very convincing and in one of uh, bond's own interviews he has tried to reason this out on being asked about this ability to conceive and to uh, present convincing characters bond says i suppose it is all about empathy putting oneself in the other person's shoes or under the skin of the characters concerned and trying to understand how they feel or react to certain situations i guess it is a sympathetic impulse of empathy with characters or people and this certainly comes across as a convincing rational response especially when we get to read more about bond's life and his response to people around him bond has also written a couple of uh, satirical or humorous stories those titles are crow for all seasons which also uh, incidentally uh, one of his favorite stories a handful of nuts and land of days coming back to this initial question and concern that we began with the lack of proper academic research on bond recently in one of the interviews that he gave to the sahitya academy uh, journal he did talk about the start of research on his works and on being researched this is his response it's nice to know that somebody is taking my work seriously because it doesn't happen often he himself is aware of this acute lack of research this acute absence of scholarly attention on his works this has happened in recent years in fact i don't think anybody paid much attention to my writing when i was actually producing most of my stories novellas suddenly much attention is pay- being paid now i feel comfortable while writing rather than talking about my own work perhaps addressing this gap we find a recent work published in 2011 by debashish bandyobathyay It's titled The Anglo-Indian Self in Ruskin Bond. It's a chronological reading of Bond's works, trying to see how his Anglo-Indian self is also depicted in most of his works. But uh, Bond himself has not really uh, held on to this Anglo-Indian identity much. Here we can again find a lot of similarity with Alan Seavey's work and writings. The Anglo-Indian identity which they possess, it is not presented in a in an extreme fashion not present in a phonetic way rather they are more skeptical about this ambivalent positioning of themselves within the context of india in an interview given to the indian express bond uh, wonders what was i anyway english like my father or anglo indian like my mother and in another context he has also spoken about his uh, uh, choice of being labeled as an indian in a land full of people of diverse origins i decided i just be myself all indian even if it meant being a minority 
of one and this is very interesting because that is the Indian is the identity that he chooses. We do not find him engaging with this term in a theoretical or in a more profound way but nevertheless in this simple statement with the way he approaches the complex idea of identity is very very clear. As uh, mentioned earlier in recent times there is a lot of interest in talking about Bond and the kind of popularity that he had been enjoying for over 5 decades. A feature that appeared in first post in 2014 it said the first writer to sweep the popularity stakes in the country is Ruskin Bond. And it is not because his books were of course two of them were turned into films. Although he has written everything from ghost stories to non-fiction, Bond remains India's favorite author of kiddie fiction. But he has also been seen as the most loved author not just by children but also by adults. And in terms of popularity again it comes across as a rather strange thing that this in spite of this high popularity and in spite of the many discussions on the a wonderful meritorious quality of his works. It has uh, received very little attention in terms of uh, uh, scholarship. As we wrap up this lecture, I leave you with two comments made on Bond by two of the other leading writers. V. S. Naipaul once remarked that of the other Indian English novelists, he does not find Ruskin Bond's writing boastful. And there is a certain way in which Naipaul manages to situate Ruskin Bond's narrative as being more authentic, more humane and less boastful. Alan Seeley, while he disagrees with Naipaul on many other things, he is quick to agree with Naipaul especially on his opinion on Ruskin Bond. In Alan Seeley's own words, Room on the Roof is one of the greatest novels produced in this country. I have not read anything of Ruskin's that has not appealed. I think this is a wonderful quality that we need to acknowledge and in the context of the many discussions that we have had as part of this course on Indian English fiction in terms of nation secularism, the nation narratives, the many postcolonial themes which were found to be dominating the uh, narrative. We find that Bond's works though they have not really received the kind of scholarly attention that they received. One cannot disagree with this element we find most of the critics most of the reviewers agreeing with it that it is difficult to come across anything of Ruskin that would not appeal us. On this note we wrap up this lecture I thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.